Incompetent people surround me wherever I go And I wish it wasn't out of line to tell them so The waiter never seems to get my order right Seems like I got to complain almost every night How much longer can I take this abuse? I try to be nice, but what's the use? When I'm the only one that does anything right Sometimes it seems like the world is run by chimpanzees Even though some of them might come But I think I can say with obvious conviction that in this old world, everybody's wrong but me. Welcome to Uncommon Sense. My name is Charlotte Laws, and today we're going to be discussing the economy primarily, gas prices, the real estate market, the Pickens plan, but we're also going to talk about what city has the prettiest women and which country has the happiest people. But first I'd like to introduce my esteemed panelists. We have Mr. Ralph Sisney, who is a well-respected writer and creative strategist. And we also have Mr. Garrett Swain, who is a talented singer-songwriter. Welcome to the show. Thanks. And Charlotte. the first topic has to do with politics and the election. We always do an update whenever possible on the election. And the polls currently show the race pretty close in a statistical tie, many of the polls do. But they also show on the electoral map that Obama would win if the election was today. Hmm. So I'm curious as to your takes. I know I heard you yesterday in passing say something about how you'd be willing to bet that McCain is going to win the election. Well, I think on one of these shows, like back in January, I said there was no way McCain was going to get the nom nomination. So I was wrong on that. So I could be wrong on this. But uh, I just think the lines of distinction that they're now being drawn, and I'm a Democrat, so I was like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be objective here, which is kind of rare when people discuss these things. Mm -hmm. I just think that when the, the, the culture of personality surrounding uh, Obama, I think the veneer on that is pretty thin. And I just think when given a choice between someone who's a moderate, which McCain is, and someone who is untested and has a pretty thin resume and a lot of questionable associations, uh, that I think the people mm -hmm. are going to, in these swing states, are going to go for uh, McCain. For McCain. Because I think we're on the, I think we're on the, the, the a tipping point right here with, with a deficit of 53, you know, trillion dollars or whatever it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's a ridiculous. Three trillion? No, no. 70, 700 and <laughs> 700 billion <laughs> dollars a year, knows 700 <laughs> billion dollars a year goes outside this country for 700 foreign oil. 700 billion, that's okay. right. Okay. That, okay. For the oil, that's for the oil. That's just for the oil. That's for oil. Okay. So that's if, another if, topic McCain, later in the show. McCain, McCain's a moderate. He says, here's the problem. We haven't done anything about it. You can talk all you want about how bad George Bush is, but Congress approval rate is, is 9%. Right. And they're not doing anything. They're just fattening their own pockets. And I think most people realize that. So I think that the, the Republicans are starting to define uh, the opposition here as being liberal, socialist, uh, unproven. And what do you think about the ad the McCain campaign did with regards to Obama, the celebrity, and you know, it's comparing him with Paris Hilton and Britney Spears? I, I, I think that was I think that was a legitimate ad, and. Um, did you see Paris Hilton's response? I did. I well, did. Sure. It was hilarious. She, she did her own little ad, and she said, you know, that that white-haired, you know, old geezer or whatever. She did this really funny little ad, but she said she her policy would be down the middle, kind of taking part of Obama's and part of McCain's policy. Not part of Obama, but no. Uh, but then McCain camp came back this morning, and they said, you know, we like Paris Hilton's plan, and we think she'd do a better job than Obama. <laughs> because, it, because, it was, because it was reasonable. I mean, we should have been drilling. I mean, Clinton is the one, when the Democrats were in control of, uh, of Congress, 
who signed no drilling in Anwar. He says, well, that gas, that won't come online for 10 years. Well, what was that, 1994? Right. See, this is, this is how stupid it is. All these people, their, their whole mentality well, is about the two-year election cycle or the right. six-year election cycle. It's not what's in the best interest well, of the people of the country. Everybody's been short-sighted. I mean, Jimmy Carter said 30 years ago we should be, you know, moving toward energy independence, and he was right. I disagree with him on so many other things. I thought he was, I, I, I liked him at the time, and I thought he was a, a well-meaning guy, and I still think he's a well-meaning guy, but he's a little misguided. But uh, he was certainly right on the energy, on that energy issue, and then Ronald Reagan killed it, you know, uh, because I guess in deference to the oil industry, or, you know, by the, justifications, it, oh, there's no crisis now, gas prices have fallen, so it's... No, that's because the barrel of oil, the, um, the embargo was in the past, and right. uh, a, a barrel of oil was under $20 a barrel, it was $18. Yeah, yeah. Still, why not look for, you, you got to anticipate... You don't have to look for it, they already, know, they already know where it is. It's a matter of letting people drill there. Well, I the agree. Okay, before, Democrat before we go on to the gas, because actually this is one of our big topics today, what did you think of... I wanted to com comment on what okay, go ahead said and about, go ahead and about, about uh, McCain and Obama. Uh, what I think is happening, I, I agree right now, if I had a bit of money, I, I would bet that McCain is going to take it only because, uh, unless Obama ch changes gears. And I, and I think Obama is actually smart enough to do this. Really, Obama's positions have been so way out on the left, and I sort of see him sort of trying to, to navigate back over to the center, and, and because so many of McCain's positions are really quite sensible. Um, so Obama is going to have to sort of finesse his way over to embrace those things, and if he can do that successfully, just by the sheer force of his personality, which is really attractive and charismatic, he will probably win. Attractive and charismatic to uh, elite liberals, not to Main Street America. That's the well, difference. Well, they will if his, if his opinions... People are, in Missouri said, you got to prove it to me, no, pal. Well, what I'm saying is if his positions, if he comes over to pretty much embrace the same positions as, as, as McCain, which I think is going to happen eventually. But I still think he's labeled with being, you know, yeah. a little bit radical and liberal and arrogant and, you yeah. know, kind of more like a professor type. And, uh, uh, you know, like... Yeah. But if he... Not but, one of us, but in other he, words. If he, is, if he does bring his positions over and actually says as such, you know what, I was wrong on the surge. You know, he, he, he he's not going to say that. He's not going to do that. I don't think well, he'll do that. I'm saying if he doesn't do that, that's the way, that's his trump card. That's the way he could take the whole, he could clear the table. Just because he will show that I, unlike George Bush, am flexible enough to admit when I'm wrong and adjust, and that's what I'm doing. And if he can put, and he, he would have the capability, the, the, the glibness of, of speech and, and, and eloquence to pull that off. If you watch his speeches, and I've watched all the debates, I've watched everything for 18 months on him, his rhetoric is halting. Yeah, it's it difficult is. for me to listen to him speak now. Not that McCain's any, he, you know. He's, he's light he's on like, specifics. You're right. And it, but what I'm saying, I'm agreeing with you. If he doesn't do what I'm saying, he will probably lose because well, he, it's, he's not going to be able to sell Let me it. ask you a question. Do you consider yourself a citizen of the world, a citizen of the country, or a citizen of your city? And I ask you this question because this is actually a poll question because I answer right. these, these national polls and it's always a question on the poll. Right. And then secondly, because of what Obama said in Germany, saying that he was a citizen of the world. Right. And so I'm curious, what, what do, uh, how do you consider yourself? How would you define yourself? I would have to say I consider myself a, 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 a citizen of this planet first. Okay, really. and, and what about you? I'm a citizen of the United States. See, I consider myself a citizen of my, really my state or my city or town would be my first choice. Why? So the, why the city doesn't, it doesn't, and, and it, it's... I mean, I know it's not technically correct, but I think it has to do with where you well, feel, I, you know, you feel the closest or the most aligned. Right. And, you know, and I feel right. more in sync with the, the, the way of thinking of my city and my state of California than I do the rest of the country. Yeah, but the, Bill of, right, the Bill of Rights doesn't have anything to do with the city of Los Angeles. No, I understand that. I'm not saying it's an accurate, technically accurate if you had a, statement. But if you had a choice to make, would you choose a course of action that would benefit your city or your local community and screw the rest of the world? Or no, I mean, I, I wouldn't, screw the rest I of the wouldn't world? do that. If you're running for president, you obviously would want to do something that was in the interest of the United States, probably yeah, primarily, because that's but your job duty, you me, know? But I think it's in the interest of the United States to align our interests with the interests of the world. If we, if we do anything, if we perpetrate any actions that really advances us and screws the rest of the world, we're ultimately screwing well, ourselves. Well, I think the reason that question is asked on the polls is because they think that Democrats or liberals are going to say, 
I'm a citizen of the world, and Republicans are going to say, I'm a citizen of the United States. And I think well, that's why that question is but, asked, but, but to I, see But, but I, I, I don't think it's a party align. line question. I, I mean, I'm a Democrat, although I, I, know, I, 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 am, I, am, I am the absolute opposite of socialism, though. I mm -hmm. do not agree with it. I do not agree with censorship. I do not agree with this creeping fascism where people can wiretap your phones without a warrant. Why are you a Democrat? Why? Mm -hmm. what, 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 I mean, just because, because I'm liberal on social issues, but I'm telling you what, you can't keep spending money. It's like the state of California, right. the, the revenues are up 40%, but they're spending more than it's coming in. It's ridiculous. Yes. Right, well, I yeah. agree with you. Well, I think you're more a libertarian than a Democrat. I would agree. So why that. don't we take a break for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the gas. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. My name is Charlotte Laws. I'm the founder and president of the Los Angeles Directors of Animal Welfare. This is Snowball. This is Shaggy. They were rescued from public animal shelters only days before they were scheduled to be given the lethal injection. Now they have a loving home. Please do not buy animals from pet stores or breeders. Adopt a dog, cat, rabbit, or other animal from your local animal shelter. Five million dogs and cats were killed in shelters across this country last year. 430,000 were killed in the state of California at a taxpayer cost of $250 million. And be sure to spay or neuter your companion animal. Free or low-cost vouchers are available. Stop the physical waste and save the lives of these beautiful and loving beings. You'll be glad you did. And the next topic is has to do with the economy, and that's we have a lot of just topics on that particular uh, subject. Yes. And I wonder if your manhole cover has been stolen because <laughs> my manhole cover has never been has never been touched. <laughs> that's good. Well, Philadelphia has experienced in the past year 2,500 manhole covers have been stolen oh, and right. taken to scrap facilities for the scrap metal because metal prices have gone up. Um, a lot of it has to do with China and the you know the the rising prices of, of scrap metal. And they used to to have about 100 a year stolen. And there are various cities in the country that are having huge issues with this. It can cost $500 for a municipality to replace a manhole cover, but you get 5 or $10 when you take it into a scrap yard. Hundred, wait, hundreds of pounds. They're very heavy. I know. It's, it's yeah. amazing. People can, you know, obviously, it's probably more than one person stealing them. So, one yeah, of they those take things cost 500 bucks? Yeah, to replace. And we've had a lot stolen from Long Beach. That's one of the cities. Why doesn't that the city go to the scrapyards and buy them used? Well, that would be a smart idea. That's probably too smart for our city officials. <laughs> they put them in the scrap heap and then melt them down. The scrapyard. Well, they've the um, most of the officials have gone to the scrapyards and said to them, "Please don't take anything that's city property." And so what they're doing is the criminals are blowtorching off the seal, but you would think that a scrapyard would say, gee, looks like a manhole cover. I doubt it belongs anywhere except to a some city. People, some people exactly. are taking recycling to the it extreme. It could be private manhole That's covers. Right. <laughs> we want recycling, but not that kind of One recycling. One manhole cover, I mean, I, I can't believe they're only getting a couple of dollars for that. No, I know. It's, it's crazy. They can get more, more than that out of my recycling bin after a poker game. <laughs> <laughs> So the gas prices is something you guys were interested in talking about before, and um, we obviously have two different proposals with regards to energy, one from McCain. We don't really have a proposal from Obama that's too concrete, as far as I can tell. But well, I think his proposal is where the solution is in the lab now, and if we fund it, we'll fund cost it. enough money at it, um, it will save us all. Right. I, th I mean, you know, that's. But what okay. do you think of what do you think of offshore drilling? What do you think of the nuclear sites? This, you know, some of the proposals. McCain wants 45 nuclear. We facilities. really don't have a choice. This country is at a, is a, at a crossroads. We either have to do everything, or we can forget about it. Yeah, or nothing. I mean, or, or or just other companies, uh, countries in Europe, like France, is like I think 80 percent of their electricity 80 is, is, nuclear. Is, is nuclear. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I read like, an article. They aren't environmentally sensitive over there? <laughs> Come on. I don't know. I read an article that actually there are more problems with the facilities than are normally publicized. And I don't know if that's true or not. Well, you have problems with wind turbines. That's just the way things work. So you fix the problems. You deal with it. Well, the thing is, all the objections that were raised to nuclear technology,
technology are from 25 years ago, from Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. When those accidents happened, everybody was, oh gosh, we've got to outlaw this thing. The technology's gotten 100 times better since then. The safeguards are 100 times better. And Ralph is, is right, and so is- Would you want to live near one? I don't care, I wouldn't have you a wouldn't problem. Pro I wouldn't want to live near have one. You ever, have you ever gone to the beach at San Onofre? Yeah. No? It's, you know, it's fine. I mean, you know, there, there are- The water is very warm. The, the chance, look, <laughs> yeah, you, have sure a much, you have a much higher <laughs> chance of, you know, dying in a, in a car bathtub. accident. <laughs> dying in a car accident than you have of, of there ever being a, a nuclear catastrophe like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, we have to do something. Well, you know, I actually think, I mean, I, I know gas prices have come down a little bit in the last week or two, but it's a I- manipulation. But yeah. I actually think that this is like a really positive thing because this is the first time that I've heard everybody in the country on the same page with, we've got to do something environmental. Right. We've got to look at but, solar and wind and you know all these the, alternatives. The, and the, I think it's fabulous that we're yeah, talking cool. about it. I had a friend in the mid 80s who actually had a, a solar energy business where he was like going in doing a, an evaluation, putting in insulated windows and solar panels. And people just wouldn't pay the price for it. Mm -hmm. because they it will now. A, it wasn't a city. Well, but I'm just saying that he was on, on, on the leading edge of that. Uh, but, in order for those solar panels for the price to come down, you have to have economies of scale. Right. But, you know, most people are talking about public policy, just don't quite understand the the, the market forces that are that are that are involved. Every well, municipal building that is built now should be built with solar panels. Well, no, I think it, I think and, they and are. You will green see the economy. You will yeah. see the economy of scale ramping up. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I agree with McCain. Uh, I mean, what 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 I see here, McCain saying is, look, let's just do everything. You know, okay, mm -hmm. if, we, if, if we drill strategy. offshore, it's not going to be online for another 10 years. That's not but, true. What? That, that is a total. I've heard, I've heard three true? years is Nancy what i Nancy Pelosi and the rest of them Nancy are going blowing gas, blowing gas about all this stuff. It's not true. You have to, like, move, the, move the, 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 the rig into place and start drilling. No, three to five years. That's Fine, ridiculous. Fine, whatever. You know, I mean, and even if it's just the fact that we're going to have the supply coming on, you <clears> saw what happened when Bush said, well, I'm going to sign this thing. That's all he did was do it, and the prices dropped Of course. It's 15%. the futures market. Well, the Democrats claim that there are already a lot of leases out there that could be taken advantage of. Is this because there's no oil in those locations? I don't, of course I you don't can. trust a word they say because they don't have any alternative except for propellers spinning on their heads. Right. Well, I mean, the thing is, if there are oil leases that the, that the oil companies are not using, it is because there's no oil there. Right. You know, why, you know, you know, like, why don't you drill there? Because we would if there was oil there, you idiot. You know, the Democrats say, well, you should give up the leases then if there's no oil there. Well, so I well, guess maybe they hope so someday there'll be they oil probably there. Will, they <laughs> probably will give up the leases because you know, rather than pay to renew them, mm -hmm. you know, why would they do that? You know? those, those leases are usually long term and there's like, there's a scale. I have, I have friends in the oil and gas business, this is what they do, is so guys go find these people and sign the leases up. Yeah. Who has the property rights right. uh, and the mineral rights or whatever? Well, right. you know, it's it's interesting. I haven't heard when, when McCain first came out with the offshore drilling. What he said was he didn't say everybody should go out and do offshore you, drilling. He said leave it up to the states. Right, exactly. And which is a very you know which kind is of as libertarian what he, thing to do. Yeah, as what he did also with the immigration policy because he doesn't. I mean, I think he really is. You know. That's, that's, more, that's, of a, more of an amnesty guy than one would want to yeah, admit. I know. That's my, and so my he said, problem. you know, I'm going to let the governors, you know, certify that the borders are secure. So he's again leaving it up to those governors. He's pushing that responsibility and they, and off on somebody else. Because I don't think he really wants to do the offshore drilling deep down inside. And that's why he's saying he's no. letting the states make the decision. He wants mm, to but give the, us. But, 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 but that's a classic uh, a federalist viewpoint is that we, we, we are a federation of states and the states should have. Have rights to do right. what they want to do, mm -hmm. right. but the, well, you know, I mean, on Anwar, he's still against Anwar. Are well, you, that's, are, that, 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 that's just I'm, a, that's I'm just sure absurd. Why. They said the same thing why. about that pipeline that exists now that it was going to decimate the water. Why did they build that? They, like they nobody, built it. You know, anybody who's ever been to Anwar? It may be a really beautiful place, the but place I don't the, think the, a couple of caribou are going to mind that there's a little pipeline They running. said that it would decimate the reindeer population when we built the pipeline that's there now. And in fact, they thrive and they use the, 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 the pipeline as uh, nesting spots. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absurd. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. Under, I don't really understand the reason not to drill in Anwar. It's a it's a pretty promising oil find. I mean, because, I, because not, it's, it's, it's the like Brazilians. It. Can I just say the Brazilians just found offshore one of the largest oil deposits ever. They they are set now. They, you know because they just dug off. They they drilled offshore and they found they hit pay dirt. You know who knows what we might find out there. You know, Believe me, they know. They don't really know. But Brazil, for, sure. for oil, they use sugarcane. That's they well, use like 100 percent for their vehicles running sugarcane. That's for their cane. ethanol program, but this yeah. is offshore and it's oil. And they oh. had a, they had a, a big find out there. Well, you know, the the, the a, a good argument that I heard. I mean, I, I'm really not for Anwar. I'm not for the offshore drilling, and I you know I'm skeptical about the nuclear plant. So I kind of agree with Obama. So what a little do you bit. expect to do? I want alternatives to. I mean, I, well, I want to see. McCain, McCain, McCain years. wants that too, but you know, who knows what? But I think now they really are going to do something because I think they see this as a only if they a get all problem. get paid off. But the only reason I can say that it would be would make sense to me for us to be doing the drilling and doing things here in this country is is the fact that we are probably going to be more careful with the environment than some other country somewhere else that we would be getting oil from or getting some sort well, of energy from. Well, an oil field is a, is, a, is a messy business. If you go look at those refineries in Saudi Arabia and in the Gulf, it's like, no, we're all fine for driving our, our, our limousines over here uh, on our way to our, you know, cheese and Chablis parties, but let, let them have the environmental disaster. We don't want it in our backyard, and that's what's so hypocritical about the whole, you know, leftist environmentalist policy. Uh, well, well, I mean, I don't know if it has to do with the backyard. I think it just has to do with protecting the environment. But as I said, maybe we would protect the environment, the environment more global doing issue. it here where we're going to be more careful right. than letting some other country where we don't know if they have controls but, but over. The, but the environment is a, gl a global issue. Environmental when, when, controls. When, when, when Bush got elected, he said he was talking clean coal, clean coal. Well, when, when Clinton and Gore got elected, they were talking about environment, environment. And you know what? Gore didn't do squat on the environment until after he uh, lost the, the, pr the presidential uh, uh, race. So, like, you know. What about clean coal? What's wrong with clean coal? Nothing, but they had yeah. to do something about it. Who? Has to do what about it? Well, they, they've been talking about develop, allow it? developing the technology. They don't want any new coal plants. We have more coal than all of the oil in the right, whole right. Middle We're East. We're the Saudi Arabia yeah. of coal. And if we can figure out ways to clean it, then that, you know, all this could be done. It should be done, but in, in the environmental lobby is, is hysterical. And and they're you know, we're just leading us right off of a cliff. I don't I, mean, I don't see it happening in California. You don't but see what happening? Having the offshore drilling, but I, there is a recent poll that says that okay. fifty one percent well, of well, how, how do those leases are out there right now? Yeah, but I don't see an additional. I don't see anything additional happening. I mean, why not? Because because of because of the state and the sentiment of the state. Although there is a poll that says fifty one percent of the people currently in California do support the offshore drilling, which has changed drastically from right. three years ago. But you know, of course, most of our leadership is Democrat, and there's you know big environmental Fine. lobbies here. Fine, they can build, build more nuclear power plants, and uh, they can generate electricity See, for plug-in Aside from the nuclear power plants, we need to run our cars. I mean, as well, uh, it's, everything has to. The thing is, there should be nothing off the table. There should be nothing off the table. And what do you think of the Pickens plan? I think it's brilliant. It's a good idea. I think it's brilliant. Boone but Pickens. the Democrats immediately came out and said, well, he's not for offshore. He said, absolutely not. I did not say that. I listened for, to him speak for an hour on C-SPAN on this. And all the way from, from uh, uh, West Texas, all the way up to the Canadian border, they did, a map, they did a wind, wind mapping of the whole United States. And they said that corridor is like windy. perfect for uh, wind farms. And he said it revitalizes small communities. He said there's this one small town. They're kind of ugly, though, aren't they? I think they're beautiful. Well, may, okay, I'll, okay. Well, I'll take your word for it then. Maybe I mean, so. It's it's you know, how you define it. But the thing is, we need them. You go to Spain, you see those windmills, and you go, oh man, you know. Yeah, it's couldn't like, they make them more attractive, like more like Dutch windmills? <laughs> you, you could what, if you had one in your backyard. What about the times when the wind is not blowing? You obviously have. The wind to have, blows all the time. Because that's not what I. Uh, L.A. Times actually came out against, and not that I agree with L.A. Times, I usually don't. But they did come out with an article today that was against the Pickens plan. Why? And that was one of their arguments is that, you know, you, you're definitely going to have to, you're going to. When the wind blows, you're still it generates. you're going to be relying on other countries when, for when a lot of things. When the wind blows, it generates. It so, generates but you'll be relying less. I mean, the thing, the thing is, what is their alternative? And if you want to criticize somebody's idea. Right. And natural gas. You know, Pickens has. Pickens come has, up with a better Pickens idea. Has, Pickens Company has a contract to provide uh, uh, natural gas, uh, you know, uh, powered uh, for the. Uh, Waste management. That's one of their contracts. Uh -huh. He said we can't get it on the on the corner uh, filling station, but the but you know we have a contract for that. 
So, you know, natural gas. He, his plan is pretty specific and pretty well thought out. Pickens? Absolutely. It could also solve the immigration problem because people come over the border and there's this wind tunnel and they, and they come out at Canada. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh dear. <laughs> Tim T Bone Pickens. But he's spending like fifty eight million. What's his, good for him, man. That's, you know what? That, that's, now, what's that's, his real What's his real name? I'm kind of curious. It's T Bone. It's not T Bone. Oh, oh, oh right. I think okay. there's a musician named T Bone. <laughs> T Bone. It's T Bone Burnett. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, uh, I think he's doing. A, I think he's doing a great service for his country, and it's amazing yeah. that the Democrats. Well, he's doing it for his. Well, there are actually environmentalists that are. Are you supporting serious? Him. The guy's like you know he's, he's yeah. up there with. Uh, he's a very wealthy guy, but he doesn't have much longer to live. Okay, he's so doing this for the. Is this complete altruism? You think? No, no. He's gonna he's gonna benefit from this, and he's actually building right now in Texas. They're building some. Farms, you know, they're building they're, like huge wind farms, six, six billion. I mean, he's doing it to make money, and, but he, he's trying I, to make money too. But I don't think that's his entire motivation, personally. Absolutely not. When you reach his age, you reach an age where, yeah, I'm making money and my family and all that, but I want to do something right for for the country. And you know, yeah. for someone to step forward and take a leadership role, which we haven't had on on this debate for I don't know, 20 years. Good for him. Can I just ask you guys, what do you think George Bush thinks of himself? I mean. What an, you know? Did, it's kind of like who cares? I well, know, he's man. surrounded by people who praise him, and you know, any you person so? who's in the limelight, even be. if they're not popular publicly, they're surrounded by people who you're who so wonderful, you're, you're okay. so smart. You meant I, well, I, George. I mean, uh, no, but, they're but not even going to say that. They're going to say you're brilliant, George. We love you, and that's what they're going to be really surrounded by. He, no, I, I think that's I, true of anybody I, who's I, not I popular in the uh, in the public. I, I think they're going to be surrounded by people. There, there, there are organizations where uh, uh, lively discussion is encouraged, and then there are organizations where you do what you're told. Right. And I think his organization is you do what you're told. I don't know. I don't know. What about? Look at look at the result. I didn't mean to digress. Along the along the same lines, uh, McCain put out this um, idea of three million dollars for a battery, for a car battery that would be an incentive for an individual or a company to come up with something that's thirty percent less expensive than what we currently Good have idea. and that lasts longer. And it would cost one, a dollar per every man, woman, and child in America to provide this, provide this prize money, essentially. I and you know, I'm, this prize I'm money's been used for it, other inventions. You know what, this sounds kind of like a gimmick because whoever comes up with that product is gonna make infinitely more money oh over money. the long haul. Well, he'll make money anyway. But uh, you know, why not? You know, publicize it. It's it's sort of make it like a like a Kennedy. Let's have a national a, lottery. A Kennedy esque, <laughs> you know, national, t you know, objective that we set for ourselves. That should have been done a long time ago. Well, I guess we're coming to the end of the show. So all the pretty women and the happy people are going to have to be on the next show. But we'll definitely talk about that in the future. Thank you for joining me well, I'll today. Come Thanks, back Charlotte. Today. And we hope we brought some uncommon sense into your life as you putter through your day. Remember. Everybody's wrong but me. See you next time. <laughs> Dude, Dennis Miller. I was really looking forward to the happy people and the. Sometimes it seems like the world is run by chimpanzees. Even though some of them might come with college degrees. It's getting hard to separate. The facts from fiction But I think I can say With obvious conviction That in this old world Everybody's wrong but me Everybody's wrong To disagree with me That really chaps my eye I thought it all through So very carefully There's no point Even considering the other side Still